Welcome to On Assignment by God, your daily devotional blogcast. From encouragement to instructions and everything in between, listen in on my conversation with God every morning. It's part devotional, part instructional, but mainly a whole lot of coffee, comedy, and conversations with God. You are a part of a community. On Assignment by God. Start the conversation. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to another episode of On Assignment by God, the daily blogcast. What's up, everybody? This is your host, Von Strong, new last name. And I heard these three words this morning, testing in session, testing in session. Those were the words I heard this morning from Holy Spirit, but y'all know he didn't stop there, right? He also said Testing checks to see where you are. Testing of your faith. Testing of your resolve. Testing of your ability to wait. Testing your strength. Trust me on each new level I bring you to. Pass the test. All right, so let's have story time on the podcast today, okay? OABG podcast story time. So the last few months, maybe even longer, because you know, sometimes you're not tracking it when you don't recognize it, so you're not really tracking it. But for the last two months, from what I can track, I felt like I've been in a testing season. Yeah, I felt like I've been tested. But I noticed when Holy Spirit and I were in a conversation this morning that he said session, not season. He said testing in session. He didn't say testing season. He said testing in session and sessions are shorter than seasons. So if that is any indication of time, that means my testing period won't be long. But then again, how we define long and how God define longs is two different things, okay? <laughs> but the bottom line is we have to trust God during the test, right? Regardless of how long it is. I remember as a kid that I couldn't stand test taking days. I mean, I did not like tests. I always felt like I had test anxiety. Of course, I had to repent and rebuke any testing uh, anxiety spirits, right? I had to rebuke that off of me and my children, right? And you know what? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm homeschooling my kids right now, and I get to decide what their quote unquote test will be. Yeah, no shade to the public school system or even the private school system. I'm just saying I, as their teacher, get to decide what test they take mm, just like holy spirit uh uh my god gets to decide what test he wants me to take but anyway i couldn't stand test y'all and here's the other thing too i never used to pay attention and focus during test prep you know in class they were like okay we're gonna prepare for the test i couldn't stand it i was like oh i don't even like test prep because i didn't want to be taking the test in the first place so then here they come talking about test prep and i'm like oh i don't even want to prep for something that i don't even want to do <laughs> who with me on that who is with me on that you like why i gotta prep for something that i don't even want to do in the first place but me not wanting to take the test never and i mean never stop me from having to take the test. Oh, that's a word for somebody. See, you may not want to take the test. You may not want to go through the trials and tribulations of this life, <laughs> but the fact that you don't want to do it has nothing to do with the fact that you're going to do it. You're going to go through the test. You're going to have to go through the test as long as you living and breathing. The Bible says that there will be tests and trials. You will endure tests and trials in this life, but be of good cheer for I have already overcome the world. I think that's John 16, 33. I think that's where they said. But anyway, y'all, me not wanting to take the test, you not wanting to take the test, it don't stop nothing, okay? You still got to take the test. Now, you might be saying, well, fun, weren't you smart enough to be exempt from taking tests? <laughs> and my answer to you would be tests not exams. 
there's a difference okay so yes i was able to exempt out of some exams some a few you know what i'm saying like one or two <laughs> yeah i'm real smart but um you know but anyway yeah i used to exempt i used to be exempt from taking some of my exams but tests were often required and necessary in many parts of my education and even my career too yeah even my career like you have to take tests you got certification tests you know in order for you to, you got your driver's license test you know they got to test you on whether you can drive or not there's always tests there's always tests okay matter of fact even before my career started while i was in college i worked at a grocery store part-time and they used to give us produce tests before we you know clocked in for our shift they used to make us do a produce test and i still remember the produce code for bananas 4011 to this day okay 4011 that's for your bananas if that sticker is missing because now they have stickers on the produce i was like why they didn't have these stickers when i was working at the grocery store no i had to remember all these four digit codes for produce so when you come through my line i'm like looking through the pictures because i don't know what the code is for asparagus okay but i knew bananas <laughs> and i used to be bad at people coming through the line with with weird looking vegetables and fruit i'm like what is this i don't even know how to look this up you know, as a name, because I don't even know what the name of this is. It's like a kumquat. Like, <laughs> like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? Like people coming through the line with all these things I have never been exposed to. But that was the purpose of the grocery store testing us so that when people did come through the line, we could be ready. Ooh, we. <laughs> but here's the thing. I was I wasn't ready. Why I didn't take the test seriously? I used to cheat on the produce test. I used to be like, "Hey, what's the produce test for today?" Before I go, you know, before I even go back to to the produce section to take the test, I used to ask some of my coworkers, "What are we testing on today?" And all I did was, you know, memorize what they said and went in there and wrote it down just to get on, you know, so I can go and clock in. <laughs> did that help me? No, it did not. Mm. No, it didn't. But anyway, y'all, <laughs> as I wrote down and thought about my conversation this morning with Holy Spirit about tests, I thought about the people in the Bible who were tested. You know who came up top of the list? Job. Y'all know Job. Ooh, Job got tested, didn't he? But God allowed Job to be tested. See, that's the thing. A lot of times we'd be like, the devil this, the devil that. The devil can't do nothing that God doesn't allow and God only allows it because he's taking you through a period of purification so that you can give him the glory. Basically it's all for God to get the glory. So God allows you to go through the thing so that he can get the glory for it on the back end. You know what I'm saying? But we should give God glory on the front end, the middle, the back, all, all, all up and through. Okay. But anyway, Job went through some tests, okay? He went through some stuff, right? And here are a few scriptures that I found while researching. I was using the words test in scripture. Y'all know how I told y'all when I hear the Holy Spirit tell me something, then I'll go and Google test and scripture or whatever it is he's telling me. I Google that and scripture so that I can find it in the scripture. But you can also use a concordance and look up words that he that you hear him say and find scripture that correlates to those words right so the scripture that i found um of course this morning that i'm pretty sure kept our conversation going was in job job 7 verses 17 through 18 it says what are human beings that you think so much of them what are they that you pay so much attention to them you check up on them every morning you test them every moment. So I'm reading this right. And, and I'm like, okay, wait, this is Job talking. And Job is asking God, what are human beings that you think so much of them? Why are you paying so much attention to them? Why you be visiting us every morning and testing us every moment? <laughs> but in verse 18, I learned that 
Job was first amazed at the mere fact that God was visiting him. So let's just pause for a moment. Like Job was asking this sort of rhetorical question, like, why you even, why you even care so much? But isn't that amazing that God does care so much that he checks on you every morning and that he tests you every moment? See, Job was amazed at that fact that God was visiting him. And then he was even more amazed that God was testing him every moment. But the part that really stood out to me was that God was purifying Job through testing. Like I said, God will permit tests for his glorious purposes. Yeah, you not just going through that just for God to be just looking at you, you know, from on high it, just to see how you going to do. No, it's for his glorious purposes. So I know that this testing session, remember, because he said session, not season. He said session, so I'm going to go with session. This testing session that I'm in is meant to purify me so that God can get the glory from me living and even more purified life. The stuff you going through is for God to get the glory of you living an even more purified life. You not the same person you used to be. You not the same person you used to be two weeks ago, two years ago. Do you know what I'm saying? Like as you've been tested, you've been purified even more. See this testing session Again, it's a session, not a season. Come on. It's a session, not a season. That's a word for somebody because you feel like you've been in a season. Like it's been winter for a long time in your life. But I came by to tell you this morning, you're in a testing session. Think about a session. A session is shorter than a season. And this testing session is designed with God's purpose in mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's designed with God's purpose in mind. What's the purpose of the test? For God to get the glory. So the purpose of me being in this testing session is for me to be firm in my faith. To be resolved and not shaken by the things happening all around me. One definition, when I looked up the word resolve, one definition means to make up one's mind. That means make up your mind about your God and your faith in your God. And don't be shaken by all the things that are going on in the world. Don't be shaken by the news. Don't be shaken by the number of cases going up or down or all around. Don't be shaken by that. Don't be shaken, but be resolved. Make your mind up that God is who he says he is. And that's it. I'm going to have faith in God and that's it. Don't let other people shake you. Don't let, uh, whoo, Jesus. Don't let the things that are going on around you shake you. Don't be all wavering in your faith. Be firm in your faith. That's what I believe God is using this testing session for me to give him the glory so that I can be even more firm in my faith. When people come and talking to me about whatever going on in this world, I can be firm in my faith. And I'm more firm in my faith today than I was two weeks ago, than I was last year during the pandemic. I'm more firm in my faith now than I was last year. Are you? Are you more firm in your faith? Are you more resolved to not be shaken by the things happening around you? You went through some tests last year. Are you more faithful this year? Are you more resolved This year, have you made up your mind and not let nobody change your mind based on stats? Huh? I'm just asking. I believe that's why Holy Spirit has me going through this testing session so that I can be firmer in my faith, more resolved, Hmm. more resolved. Make up my mind. If I say I'm a believer, then I'm a believer. If I say I trust God, then I trust God. 
If I say I'm going to let God figure it out, I'm going to let God figure it out. I'm not going to try to put my hands on it. I'm going to let him figure it out. If I say God is Jehovah Jireh, my provider, then doggone it, he going to provide. I don't have to sit here and worry and wonder why this ain't came through, why that ain't came through. Because I'm telling y'all the truth. Some of the stuff I be like, um, you know, swallowing Lord. Um, so, uh, yeah, that ain't came through yet. And, uh, you know, this, this over here is, I got to do this over here, Lord. And you going to trust me, huh? Cause see fun. You done been in, ah, thank you. Holy spirit. You done been in worse situations and you came out like pure gold. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You done been in more dire situations, D-I-R-E, and you done came out on top. Mm. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. See, the testing session is designed with God's purpose in mind for me to get better and better at waiting on God. So the way I wait today is different than the way I waited yesterday. It's different than the way I waited last year. It's different. It's different because each testing session (laughs) purifies you even more. Each time God sends you through a test, it's always to help you depend even more on him. See, this session is helping me to to depend on God for my strength, knowing that even when I am weak, He is strong. You know, that's in, that's the word of the Lord, but you got to act that out. You know, that's what faith is. It's acting like what God said is because what God said is (laughs) see every year, you know, during our school days, y'all remember this? We would advance to the next grade. You know, some of y'all maybe stayed in the same grade a couple of years. I don't know. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Not really. If that happened to you, it had to happen, right? It it had to happen. It had to happen. But during our school days, we would advance to the next grade and it was a new level of learning, which brought on new levels of testing, right? You wasn't taking a a third grade test in fifth grade. You weren't taking a 12th grade test uh, in, in college. They weren't giving you 12th grade tests while you in college. You know what I'm saying? So as you kept, Uh, Going to new levels of learning, you got new levels of testing. Ooh, come on, Holy Spirit. See, as we grow in the word, there's going to be new levels of testing. Yeah, yeah. And so today's conversation with Holy Spirit was to let me know and to now let you know that we must trust God on every new level that he brings us to. We can't pass today's test with last year's strategies. Ooh, you can't pass today's test with last year's strategy because you done leveled up. You done moved to a new level. You are, you, are, you, you in another grade now. So you can't be using third grade tactics for fifth grade testing. You can't. Yeah, everything builds on one another, right? In third grade, you know, it, that's a build up from second grade. Tenth grade is a build up from first through ninth grade. It's a build up, right? But you got to get... <laughs> Ooh, he said testing sh- checks to see where you are. See, if you take a test in 10th grade and you don't pass and then they say, OK, well, let me give you the ninth grade test and you don't pass that. And then let me give you the eighth grade test. You don't pass that. That that's that's showing whoever is testing you where you really at. Or let me say that properly where you really are. OK. Yeah. So to prepare me for this next level, to prepare you for this next level, God has to purify us even more so that we can have fresh vision of him that goes far beyond what we've been having. Right. You want to have fresh vision. I want to have fresh vision. In one of the study notes written by Dr. Tony Evans, y'all know I rocks with Dr. Tony Evans, right? I got the study Bible. I love the way he puts the study notes, you know, and explains the scripture and all of that kind of stuff and really, really just love it. So if you want to get you a Tony Evans study Bible, head over to onassignmentbygod.com and in the sidebar of the blog, I got a purple one for the ladies and a brown one for the guys. I mean, you know, pick, pick you up one. Is the is totally worth it, okay? But in its in the study notes, Dr. Tony Evans said, in the midst of trials, 
you know, test trials. We should pray for deliverance, but we should also pray that God would use our circumstances to allow us to see him, understand him and worship him as never before. Y'all, we must pass this test to get to the next level so that we can give God glory like never before. Job 23 10 says, but he knows the pathway that I take. If he tested me, I would come forth like gold. James 1, 2 and 3 says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And Exodus 16, 4 says, then the Lord spoke to Moses He said, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people must go out each day. Have them gather enough bread for that day. Here is how I will test them. I will see if they will follow my directions. And we know if you've read the story in Exodus, you know, God was raining down bread from heaven and the instructions were for them to just get enough bread for that day. But you know, them greedy people was trying to store that bread and it didn't last. The bread got maggots on it and it, it, you know, it didn't last overnight, but they, they sure tried it. They was disobedient and tried it, but I'm laughing, but you know, that's been me before God tell me to do something. He said, Hey, do this. And I be, you know, modifying The directions, modifying his directions, y'all. Let's not modify God's directions. Let's be obedient and follow his directions. Testing, testing is in session. Let's pass God's test and give him all the glory. Oh, y'all, I'm telling you, I love my conversations with God this morning. Didn't you? Now, I want to offer Christ to you. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, like you haven't said Jesus is Lord. You haven't made him your personal Lord and Savior. If you haven't done that ever, I don't care if you've been in church your whole life. But if you ain't never prayed Romans 10, 9, here we go. All right. You about to get saved right here, right now. If you have a willing heart and you want to do this. Okay. You got to, you got to have a desire to be saved. You can't just be saved. Okay. Your heart got to be right. You can't just say, say this scripture and your heart be wrong okay so if you want to be saved right you want to be a believer a born again believer you want to have uh eternal life with jesus christ then here's the prayer you want to say let's open your mouth and say this jesus is lord and i believe in my heart that god raised him from the dead that's it when you pray that prayer in all sincerity you are saved the next thing you want to do is get connected with a great Bible-based church in your community, a church that follows the word of God, that obeys the word of God. And then you want to stay connected to other believers like myself, people that are going in the same direction you're going in, not people that are going in the opposite direction. And you thinking you're going to save them. No, 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 no. You just got saved. So you want to go in the direction of other believers. You want to hang around more mature believers so that when questions come up, when you're trying to understand why this is that, why I got to even take a test anyway, all that kind of stuff, you want to be around mature believers, okay? So get connected to other believers who have been in the faith for a while, okay? And then also I want you to start having daily conversations with God through prayer. That's what this podcast is all about. You're hearing me tell you what me and the Lord talked about every day. That's what you're listening to me telling you our conversation. But I want you to start having your own conversations with God every day. Okay. now I want you to do me a favor and text the word saved, S-A-V-E-D to 601-299-4398. Let me get that number to you again so you can write it down. I'm going to go slower this time. Text the word saved, S-A-V-E-D to 601-299. Nine four three nine eight. You got it this time. Lock me in your phone. Matter of fact, you can put Fun Strong new last name, or you can put me down as O A B G. Put me in your phone. Lock me in and text me anytime. 
Got questions? Text me. Need prayer? Text me. Want to understand something? Text me. I may or may not know, but I will definitely go and try to find out for you. Okay. And then finally, y'all, finally, finally, let me just say this. Welcome to your new life with Jesus Christ. If you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm super excited for you. All of heaven is rejoicing right now. You do know that, right? If you didn't, now you know, okay? All of heaven is rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. I'm excited. So be sure to text me and let me know you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because that, you know, at the end of the day, that's the whole point of this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm pretty sure for God to get the glory from this whole OABG story, okay? This whole conversation. If you got saved, that was the whole point of all of this, okay? Amen. All right, y'all. We're going to jump into our assignments. Why don't we just go straight on into that? Assignments for today. Number one. What did Holy Spirit say to you in your conversation with him this morning? Now, if you just got saved and you haven't been having conversations, that's okay. You get started. You can get started right now. You can start having a conversation with him right now. It doesn't have to be morning time either. But the point is every morning before you do anything else, before you check your phone, before you talk to your spouse, before you talk to anybody, you want to talk to the Lord first. Okay. And you do that through what's called prayer. And you start talking to the Lord, okay? So write down what you hear him say to it. You may be like, I don't know if that's him or not. Write it down anyway, okay? Write it down. You, If you ever text me and say, I'm, I'm not sure I'm hearing from the Lord. I'm going to say, send me a picture of what you wrote down that he said. And what we'll do is we'll take that picture and what you heard and we'll compare that to his word. Because if you heard something that ain't his word, that ain't him. Okay, that's how you can determine if that's God, if that's you or if that's, you know, Satan. Okay, number two, do you have a different outlook now on testing based on today's episode? You just heard the episode about testing. Do you now have a different outlook on testing? Like, are you like, okay, yeah, okay, now I understand why I'm going through what I'm going through for God to get the glory. Okay, okay, that, that, now it. It all makes sense because sometimes it don't make sense and and we can let the fact that it don't make sense cause us to, you know, not do the right thing, not pass the test, not, not talk to God about it, you know, all those types of things. So write down if you now have a different outlook about testing based on today's episode. And then assignment number three, record yourself reading God's word. So just pull up a new note audio, video, however you want to do it and record yourself reading scripture. Yep. And then after you record yourself, save it and then play it back. And this process will allow your faith to be built because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And then also God will give you revelation. I believe he'll give you revelation through your own voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So make sure you do that. And then if you haven't grabbed a copy of the new book, The One Hour Prayer Challenge, go ahead and do that. If you're like, hey, I need some help being consistent with prayer time. If you let me say this, too. If you need help with consistency in any area of your life, start being consistent with prayer. And when you do that, it'll affect every other area of your life. Okay, now this book will take you through a process called the one hour prayer challenge to help you become consistent in prayer. And when you get super disciplined in your prayer life, I'm telling you, you'll be super disciplined in your eating. You'll be super disciplined um, in your behavior. You know what I'm saying? It'll affect every area of your life. So go to on assignment forward slash shop. And grab a copy of the one hour prayer challenge book and journal. That's right. It's a two in one. You get a book and you get a journal. It's an all in one deal. Okay. So go grab your copy. And uh, that's it. Look at me. My voice tried to change up. Sorry about that. But that's it for today's episode, y'all. Make sure you share the broadcast with someone who needs it. Make sure you become a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber. Head over to ownassignmentbygod.com or you can text the word subscribe 
to 601-299-4398 okay and then you'll get a little form where you put your name and email in and guess what you'll get the broadcast every day in your email Mm -hmm. then you won't even have to remember you know oh did i listen to the broadcast today you won't even have to remember it's gonna come to your inbox okay all right y'all that's it for today's episode hey hey pass the test okay pass the test one thing i do know in life regular life and spiritual life when you don't pass the test you'll keep taking it over and over again until you do Mm -hmm. so don't give up pass the test. I'll talk to you tomorrow.